Hey, what's up? How you all doing? Sorry, there's always this delay. Like they always cut like the first <laughs> five or ten seconds. It's always cut. Hey, anyone out there? Welcome to what are we? Forty-two, episode forty-two of what I listen to. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. It's good it to see everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Pam's get, Pam will be here. Pam will be here. She will be here. She will be here. Having some technical difficulties. Well, you know, it happens. We have technical problems sometimes. We will deal with it. We'll have a good time. Uh, so let's let's do a little bit of uh, housekeeping we, uh, before we start. So as usual, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Oh. Yeah. Channel there housekeeping. <laughs> like and subscribe. There we go. Click the thing. Click the thing. Smash the whatever. Ring the bell. Whatever. Whatever you do. All right. It's going to be a good show. Rachel, thanks for coming on. It's nice to see you. Hello. How's it going? Jim, how are you doing? Cheers, cheers. What's everyone been up to? Skullfest last weekend, right? How was that? Two weeks ago now. Two weeks ago. It was great. I, I don't think good. I stopped moving. <laughs> any, <laughs> like, on the plane. <laughs> any, uh, any highlights, band-wise, Skullfest? I, I, again, uh, where a finale from Texas was really, really good. I, oh, they're great. Yeah. yeah. Enzyme. Enzyme. Cool. Enzyme. <laughs> and oh, the Kreutzen, right? The Kreutzen was a highlight, right? The, the crosses. The crosses. The crosses. Yeah. Yeah, they were great. They were like, uh, it was one, the, it's the singer and then some dudes. To do. Um, the, the singer, <laughs> the singer is like uh, he was like he was like all over the place. I mean, he's got to be like in his sixties. Those guys have to be up there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he was like bringing it. It was great. And I thought Appendix. I only went to one show, so <laughs> um, Appendix was amazing. Um, yeah, I heard good really things about. Were they like touring at the same time as Enzyme? Same yeah, year? I, they were touring with Vaccine out of New York. Right. Yeah. yeah. East, northeast. Uh, who else did I see? I really liked uh, 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 Peace Talks. Peace Talks. Oh, they're yeah. awesome. They're Pittsburgh yeah. band. Yeah. They were really good. That impressed me. Peace Talks. And, yeah, um, those guys just played a show in Philly, um, which I didn't go to, but it was like really well attended and they're they're awesome. Like, they're really yeah. good. Yeah. Kick ass band. Like, you know, I, I, I I took a tape, but there was nobody around to take my money, so I owe them five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> nice, um, Rachel. Your that. Rachel, your band has a new record out. You want to plug that for a bit? Oh yeah. yeah, I'm in a band called The Dissidents with my husband, who is Bill, and um, Janine, who is in Witch Hunt, and now actually Nicole from Witch Hunt is in a band, and uh, Sean who is in, they're all in the brood. Basically okay. during, during the pandemic, the brood couldn't play together because it was like too many households and we were only right. two households. So we got going and we, it's a split with vitriolic response from, uh, from Manchester, UK. Right. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, what am I going to say about it? I think it's really good. Everyone I mean, should check it out. How can people get hold of the record? Who, who put it out? Um, the the dissidents.bandcamp.com. Somehow no one had taken that yet. So. There you go. Yep. Check it out, everyone. Let's see if anyone wants. I played. And Bill's them. really famous. <laughs> <laughs> the hitmaker. He's the oh, hitmaker. Yeah. Yeah. Hit <laughs> Bill Specter of DIY. <laughs> Bill, Bill Specter. <laughs> oh God! Thank oh, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's see if anybody's in the chat, shall we? Yes. You probably noticed what kind of a. Uh, easing into it this week. Let's see if anyone's in, in the chat. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Peace yeah. Talks is great. There you go. Hi, Jordan. How you doing? Correct. Correct statement. Uh, there you go. That's, that's, that's Scoots, right? I think that's Scoots. Prime Direct. Yes, Scoots. Yeah. Scott. Peace, Boy, Talks. Was... Peace Talks 7 Inch from a couple of years ago is good. That's true. I was impressed. I never saw them before. I was just like, wow, great band. <laughs> yeah. But uh, who else? Who else was really good? You only saw one show, Rachel? 
yeah Yeah. just to show well we saw i saw a little bit of the the enzyme show before that but we had to leave well before enzyme you know the one thing too is like a lot some of those like you know the band times overlapped and you had to like Uh you know you had to like pick and choose sometimes in that schedule so sometimes you missed out you know it's like you know you don't like to be pulled in either direction but you're gonna go where you really want to see i guess (laughs) yeah who you haven't seen before you know yep but uh no. yeah did uh, you see death- really good too, long knife. did you see either of the death charge shows i didn't see the death charge didn't they do like no. one like d-beat show and one like post-punk show is that correct yeah it, it kind of was like that and then uh i saw behind enemy lines oh yeah and um but uh you know, it's like upstairs, downstairs. Who am I going to go see? <laughs> Me and oh, the Yeah, both clubs. The the are uh, not the club you played though, Rachel. They had like two stages, so you had to run up and down the stairs. So, and some bands are playing at the same time, right? Yeah. Yep. Hey, um, Salmo's here. Hey, Salmo. Ting <laughs> <laughs> ting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to have to get going, to right? Records? Okay. I'll to show some records. <laughs> okay. Let the, uh, let the games begin. All right. We've each got, as usual, we've each got five records. As always, it's been a Herculean task to, <laughs> to like narrow it down to, to five. But I think I've got my five. Uh, I'm excited to see. Oh, hey, it's Daniel. How you doing, Daniel? Daniel from Sorry State. There you go. All right. Yeah. Get most of my records now from Sorry State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. I'm going to start off my first pick. We'll go around five times. I'm looking forward to everyone's picks tonight. I'm excited to see what everyone's got. I've got a short, sharp shock. I haven't done a short, sharp shock. Short, sharp shock for a while. I think this is one. Uh, Mike DeLorenzo was kind enough to like send me this record. I got it last week. Going back to Staten Island. Staten Island, like 1995 to 1998. What was happening in Staten Island in the mid-90s? I have no idea. I wasn't there. I don't know. I got my ass kicked there once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hardcore. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. This Apparently this band was a very like beloved band in that like small period of time in Staten Island and they just had uh, their like discography uh, record put out by a couple of labels. I'll tell you about that later. I'm talking about this band, CR. Anybody know this band? I, uh, um, there you go. CR. AKA. The Compassionate Revolution. That's what CR stands for. So I guess they're like a mid-90s band, active in Staten Island, they put out a record, an LP, a single, some demos, and then this is like their discography, put out by Andrew from Black Armored Jacket, and uh, Sean from uh, Manage the Bastard and Pillsbury Hardcore, they just put this out. Uh, Hardcore, obviously, but like hardcore at a fast pace. I'm going to say like drop dead speed hardcore, super fast uh, hardcore, but there's a lot of things that I can only describe as like mid nineties going on as well in this. So it's like a mixture of like drop dead speed hardcore and then kind of like stuff that was going on in the nineties. But there isn't like mosh, like mosh core, whatever you want to call it. It's not. There's not. It's yeah. Like breakdown. It's actually really the opposite of that. So uh, and I, it, there's a lot of clues actually. There's a little uh, insert in here with like some of the bands they played with at the time, and like. Uh, because they play with Drop Dead a lot. You can't really see it, but this is all the flyers they did. So they played with Drop Dead a lot in the 90s, but they also played with, like, Ensign and, like, Indecision and Eucharist and Ink and Dagger and all those kind of bands. And I think Pam is... Hey! Hey! Just some time. Hey. Hey. Me? We're just doing our first round of records. We just we did started. it. We just started. <laughs> Can you yep. hear me? Can yep. Yeah, can you. you're there. You looking great. You look awesome. <laughs> Ready to go. Oh, so it's my turn. Not your no. turn. <laughs> Not <yet. Hold> your <laughs> horse. <laughs> hey, you said yes. you did the first round. Yeah, it's no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'
I'm talking about so CR. Mike, Mike's doing his first record. Yeah, I'm talking about CR, the Compassionate Revolution from Staten Island, mid '90s, speedy, fast hardcore band with all this like '90s stuff. I like you guys like like Glassjaw, Eucharists, like they will play with those kind of bands too. Ink and Dagger. Yeah. Is that emo? yeah? Indecision came to mind when he started describing. <laughs> there, there you go. And like Artie yeah. was in Indecision, right? Artie, regular guest on That's the great. show. But there's one thing that I heard in this record that maybe other people might not have heard or hear when they hear it. Because I know that like Mike, the guitar player, he's a great guy. He's set in this record. Mike is a huge uh, Voivod fan. It's his favorite band, right? Voivod is, is his favorite band. And you can hear all these like Voivod like, guitarists in this like 90s hardcore. So it kind of makes it really stand out. But I think like nobody really knew that like Mike was a huge Voivod fan. But you can hear like Voivod like all over this record, even though it's like a hardcore, hardcore punk record. Hey. CR. Anybody know CR in the in the comments? I, I, I missed it. Staten Island is not that far from here. Right? No. Oh, there you go, Jordan. That, yeah, I, I knew someone was going to say the Wu Tang Clan when I said Sta Staten Island. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, there you go. Really good life. There you go. And there's an, like an addendum, addendum to this story, which actually blew my mind because I love this band. I, do you know? Do you guys like the Budos band? You know that band? Oh yeah, I know that band. Yeah. Right. So the bassist of CR now is active in the Budos band. Oh, weird. Which really <laughs> surprised me. I didn't see that one coming because uh, yeah, I love the Budos band. Which is like a funk, like an instrumental yeah. funk band with like heavy Black Sabbath riffs going on in there too. Yeah. So check out CR and uh, check out Budos band. The Budos band. There you go. That was an extra thing that I wasn't expecting. You know, the Budos band thing because I, I love the Budos. Just kind of frozen now. I was wondering if she was oh, yeah. frozen or not, or just in yeah. deep thought. I... There you go. She'll be back. Yes, at least. <laughs> All right, Rachel, what's your first record today? Let's okay, I have a tape. Tape? But don't worry, nice. I also have the record. There you go. It's a band called Miseria. I'll hold up the record. It's bigger. Mm -hmm. um, they're from Croatia. They're on um, Doomtown Records, which is like a really good label for like punk hardcore mm -hmm. post punk um from like mostly from eastern europe although not entirely mm -hmm. i think doomtown actually put out like a a poison ruin seven inch in europe right. okay cool. um cool. just like a, the european version um but yeah miseria are like um definitely very influenced by the like kind of yugo punk mm -hmm. of the 80s um, they're kind of post-punk, um, but, like, very aggressive at the same time. Like, definitely not, like, soft um, and not, yeah. like, yeah, they're, they're really, really good. And, you know, kind of, like, minimalist and, like, some synths. And um, they're actually, I just saw the other day, someone posted a show that happened, I think, in yeah. um, in Croatia somewhere or other. They played with Spirito de Lupo. And there's like live footage of them, which is like, it's amazing. It sounds great. It's a really good, like there's footage of all the bands. Um, it's on YouTube. I think everything on it is in Croatian, but they put a link to it. Miseria put a link to it on their band camp. So that's, I don't know if anybody, oh, I see a cat. This is, or, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first one. That's the first on the channel. I think that might be the first Croatian record we've had. On the channel, oh, really? Right? Yeah. There's so many good bands from... Uh, yeah from Croatia um, that are like all on this, on Doomtown Records. Doomtown. Doomtown Records is oh, yeah. yeah. I think Doomtown is based in Croatia as well. It's okay. definitely Eastern European. There's like not, no, it's not a mailing address on it for some reason. I don't know. I oh. guess because it's 2023. But. There you go. Oh, it's, it's brand new, right? But yeah, this is, I really hope they, they tour the US. They're like so, so good. I really like them. Yeah, it's funny when you said the post punk because there is definitely like the like the like softer like side of post punk, and there's like the more like hard hitting like post punk. Yeah, 
yeah, like there's a more kind of poppy, like new wavy synth poppy, right, and then right. like, kind of hot to like, yeah, yeah, and or like UK DIY, kind of like, yeah, Upsword is great. Um, yeah, I love that band, and I forget this singer has another project on Doomtown, I can't remember the name of it. But this singer, her name is like Dragona or something like that, yeah. um, has a really good side project on also on cool. Doomtown. So. Yep, that's a great pick, first on the show. Beautiful. Nice one. Mis miseria. 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 Yeah, miseria. I don't know if I'm pronounce it. I pronounce it miseria. Miseria. I think that's I'm I think sorry. it means misery. Misery? <laughs> <laughs> it might mean that. It might mean that. Oh, and <laughs> this cassette came out and then oh, right. this seven inch came out like like not much later, but this the seven the seven inch has an extra song. There you go. I feel like that's a record that Sorry State might get in. Yeah, I think they might. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not super new. I think they may have had it when it came out. Okay. I think it came out maybe like last year. Nice. All right, Jim. That's your first. All one. right. Well, this this is brand new because I just got it in the mail yesterday. Woo. And. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> West That's Festival. they played Skull Fest. Albany, <laughs> Albany, New York. Um, I, t I gave it a couple spins. I mean, I've seen them live a bunch of times. My band's played shows with them, and they have a, hand, a handful of seven inches out. They always kind of have that dark vibe, still hardcore, but not, you know, not post punk. Death rock, maybe. Oh, nice. um, but but with hardcore sensibilities, like you know, uh, giant production. The drums, everything sounds super good and rich and loud. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, like I said, it's got a, a you know very uh, doomy. There's Pam. She's back. <laughs> it's still not your turn yet. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> but, we'll turn uh, next. But uh, th this just came out. Been waiting for it for a while. Um, but uh, you know, very cryptic, uh, haunting, brooding. But uh, excellent guitar sounds. Um, uh, just dark, good quality stuff. And, and uh, these guys have been holding the Albany scene together with a handful of other people the last few years. And uh, all great people who are involved with this project. And um, they also, some of them play in uh, Mystery Girl, which is more of a, a, a rock and roll kind of heartbreakers kind of thing. Well, Mystery Girl, you know. Yeah, kind so, of power pop. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but, you know, some of the same members. But, uh, you know, definitely they carved themselves their own niche now. You know, like, there's not too many bands on the East Coast doing this. So, I recommend it. What else could I say? What else did I write? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen a bit of talk about that record. I no, but I, it. It's just really well done. They took their time. They also were very concerned uh, about the way it looked and the way it was. Like, the mm -hmm. lyric sheets and everything are, are pretty cool. And, you know, it, they just did, they did a really good job. They, 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 they went through... I don't know if you can see this, the plastic on it. This this came with it. This was like the, the new thing, the sleeve protector, limited edition thing, but uh, pretty cool stuff, you know? Um, they are really good. More, it's not dark wave. It still has hardcore in there, you know? So uh, maybe maybe like a, a, a more contemporary TSOL. Ah, yeah. now we're yeah. talking. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, a lot of fun. And uh, I will go see them next time. They're around. <laughs> they, they, played the, they played the one, the one Skull Fest show that I went to, and even their like merch price list was all like beautiful. Just right with the sharpie, like right before. <laughs> and uh, no, they, they they've been friends to my band, so it, you know. 
we try to be friends to them too. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're nice very, guys. very, very excellent record. I'm happy for them. They got their debut LP. I think is is a good one. Everybody should get it. Beautiful. Tom, hey, yeah. welcome Hi. to the Thunderdome. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yeah, can you hear we can me hear. We can hear. We can hear. I'm perfect. Um, is that backwards? It's backwards. Yep. <laughs> it is, but as we know, the people watching on YouTube, it won't be backwards for them, so it's fine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how that works, um, but it's true. <laughs> it's just about so how you say it. Persona. Persona. Uh, free Your Mind. Pretty fucking awesome band. Um, I had never heard them until they played for, like we had a friend who passed away and they had a memorial for him and they joined shows together. So they played with like Why Die and Complete Fucker and then this band and another band. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Um, and these cats are from New York and mm. the drummer I think is in ADHD. All right. And he go. does like the artifacts audio shit in New York. Like they, right. they put out a lot. They do a lot of um, recording for a lot of New York bands like Flower mm. and Dollhouse and stuff oh. like that. But um, they fucking rock. They were so good. Um, I've been listening to them for a whole month <laughs> since Jeff died and, we, and I saw that show. Um, the drummer is insane. Like just a maniac, so fucking good. Uh, Sasha is their name. We were um, talking about that, right, Pam, before about that drummer. Yeah, I love them. I, I've been listening to them nonstop, like pretty much every day. Um, it's a like a one-sided, it's pretty cool. It's one of those one side and the other side is etched. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like basically seven songs, maybe 11 minutes long. <laughs> it's, it's short. Um and they put it out, I think they put it out, let's see, I don't know if you can see that at all. You probably can't see any of the. Oh, I can see, it looks like the Vertigo like, label though a little bit. Oh wait, I can see it now. I can see it, this figure. Oh, it was put out by Iron Lung, actually. And I think they recorded it like in 2020, but they didn't yeah. release it until 2022. All right. Um, young kids kicking ass, fucking making, Super fast, uh, raging hardcore New York. I think their scene is kind of like ours in Pittsburgh, where they're real um, interconnected and like a bunch of people in a you know one person in like ten bands, that kind of thing. But um, I had never heard them before. I think they have a cassette out, and that's it, uh, like a self-released uh, three-song cassette, and then this. Um, you see the back, cool. They're all messed up. So they got some girl power in there, which is always awesome. Ooh, yeah. Um, and then the poster is pretty sweet that comes with it. It has like the lyrics. Poster. It's a giant poster. I'm not going to pull it all out, but um, Good. I think I got it from their. No, I got it from them when they played. And I, like I said, I haven't listened to anything else since. But like. <laughs> They're probably my favorite, like, new discovery. I'm so you're just going to show that one five times since you have been listening to anything else? <laughs> huh? You're just going to show that one five times since you didn't listen, you haven't listened to anything else? <laughs> what? Just... <laughs> <laughs> <Pardon>? <laughs> it's what are you listening to? You're only, you're only listening to one thing. <laughs> um, then that's what you have to show five times. Yeah. I'm glad they did it in that 12 inch format. I'm a big fan of the 12 inch like single. I love that. Because I'm too old. Yeah, like there. the MLP. I think they called it an MLP or something. Mini LP. Like yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So is there a, a press yeah, like record? The, um, what was it? Speed Plans is like that. That's it. That's what I was thinking of. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to put more music on the other side for the cost of that pressing? <laughs> that's, that's a good yeah. Point. Let's you make it one sided. <laughs> <laughs> in general. Can't hear shit. Wait, <laughs> All right, that's a great first pick. 
a debut on the show? Everyone that was what? Short, sharp, shock, Mike. Nice. That's a good idea. I'm going to do one of those one day. <laughs> Wait by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're here. We're, we're, we're yeah, we're glad you're here. Yeah, 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 we'll have a good time now. Sorry, I can't hear shit. That's okay. <laughs> you just wildly guess what we're saying. Yeah. Well, I'm really just wild my mom. She's great mom. I might have to show a tape on, on my show. Can I do that? Oh, no. <laughs> I got a tape. First time I've ever, I've ever shown a tape on the show. Uh, it's a good one. So I'm going to show it. I think I mentioned last week my buddy Cece from Boston was in town. Cece from Life of Stark. Life of Stark is his main band. Oh, yeah. He's the guitarist of Life of Stark. Uh, he was in Osaka with his partner, uh, Madeline. They were traveling around Japan. We had a really good time hanging out. And he was kind enough to give me a copy of his new band. They have a tape out. Going back to like Death Rock and stuff like that. This is this is Death Rock. Um, this is the tape. Can't see it, right? No. Nope. Name of the band. I'm going to cheat because I've got. I have the power <laughs> to do this. So I'm going to do this. Hang on a minute. Uh oh, some media. Some media. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got a microphone. Sure. Some media. Yeah. So the, the band is called The Sin Offering. The Sin Offering. The Sin. Uh, and the name of the tape is uh, Charnel House. It's on Bandcamp too, but there's the physical tape. Four tracks. Uh, CC. There we go. Bye bye. CC plays the guitar. He's a great guitarist. Uh, Madeline is a singer. Uh, and I was talking to Chris about it, and he kind of told me. Yeah, yeah, it's CC's band, yeah, and Madeline's band. But yeah, he's like, I was like, yeah, we, we actually, it's funny, we went to a Revenge Records in Osaka, and uh, he gave like Jackie a copy from Frampton, and he put it on, and he's like, man, this is great. Like, how many copies do you have? It's like, all right, I don't have any copies, like, but he's like, send me some. But yeah, it's Death Rock. And I asked him, you know, what, what were you kind of influenced by? And he's like, well, you know, it's like old Christian death, like old 45 grave. And it's like that heavier side of post-punk and death rock. And he really like emphasized like the gothic like side of this tape. Mm -hmm. And like when you hear gothic, you might be thinking like alien sex fiend and Bauhaus, but it's not that kind of gothic. It's a different kind of gothic, he says. So it's like it's also a little bit like you know, like bands like Gas Tank, like the old like Japanese, like with the you know, with the makeup and stuff and the, the like bit of like a horror feel to it. Kind of sounds a bit like that, Christian Death. And I kind of hear a little bit of um, Ex Mal Deutschland in there too, a little bit in the guitar playing and the vocals. And they're really into the Italian like horror metal too, like uh, Death SS and uh, Violet Theatre, all that like psychedelic like horror metal out of Italy, which is really really gothic and like almost like death rock and post punk. Yeah, but it's great. It's brand new. Just came out in June. You can get it on Bandcamp, the Sin Offering, uh, Char Charnel House is the name of the tape. <laughs> well, I'm Char telling you, going back to Wet Specimens, you should check that out. Too. Yeah, when you, I was thinking it might be a little bit of crossover. That's maybe. up your alley then. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And as a little aside, actually CC kind of told me not to say this because those guys don't play on this tape, but they're in the band now. They have um, Exit Order. There's oh, members yeah. of Exit Order like in oh, really? this band now, but they're not. They don't play on this tape though, so that's pretty cool. Who does play on the tape? Chris, Madeline, and I forgot who else is on it. It's probably on Bandcamp. You can check it out. Some other people play on it. So. Other people who are no longer in the band. That's it. Yeah. Ex members of yeah. members of Sin Offering, not on <laughs> not on this cassette tape. <laughs> 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 it's great, great stuff, and it's new and it's on tape and it's on Bandcamp. Check it out. And Chris Corey, like he does lots of things, and like he always, everything he does is is good. So check out Sin Offering. That's my second pick. That sounds really cool. That kind of stuff really happen. There's a lot of stuff like that happening right now, which I am yeah. all for at the moment like. this is definitely like as we were talking about like the heavier like side of like death rock yeah and gothic. Yeah. yeah yeah it's nice. nice to hear it's like yes yes yeah, yeah. yeah. 
right, should I do a record? Yeah, let's have your, what's your, what's your second yeah. record? Okay, we got the heavier side of um, folk rock. Oh. <laughs> um, this is Comus. It's from the early 70s from England. Yeah. Um, uh, the album's called First Utterance. And it's fucked up. It's it like up. running around in the woods naked on ass <laughs> on mushrooms, on mushrooms, um, like freaking out and playing like, um, you know, a mandolin um, and a violin. Like this very, very aggressive violin on this record. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's really good. Like it's one of just one of my favorite records of all time. Um, and it's yeah, it has very fucked up lyrics. Like it's there's a lot of like rape and death and yeah. um, like primal forces. Um, it's like it's hard. It's hard to describe. I've never heard anything like. If anybody knows of another band that is like this, you know, um, it kind of remind. It kind of makes me think of like what that band Coven was probably trying to do. But yeah. did not really execute it like this. This is like evil. <laughs> it's actually that, especially that first song. Was it Diana? Diana. Diana. Yeah, that, Diana that song is a very in particular is very song. like unsettling and and scary. Like it's uh, very like yeah. Yeah, and the song "Drip Drip," mm -hmm. um, which is about like murdering someone, um, murdering a woman, is like very like yeah. I'm like, it makes me uncomfortable. Um, but it's so good. Like I really, really love it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if people from this band did anything else either. I'm not sure. I know they did like a couple of other records though after that that aren't quite as good. Yeah, they're yeah. they're not. Yeah, there's nothing nothing like this that they did either. It's just like a, this is like a one once ever in the world. Yeah. Kind of yes, I always thought that would be a good like. I mean, not really, but like. Um, Wicker Man, like some of the scariest things in the Wicker Man, it's, they had that yeah. in the background. Yeah, it's like what you would think maybe it would be, like nothing in the Wicker Man soundtrack is as fucked up as this. No, no. But, um, <laughs> but like, yeah, it is very, it has that Wicker Man vibe, that like folk horror yeah, yes, um, yeah. kind of feeling to it. Um, but yeah, it reminds me more than anything of like when you're a little kid and like, like the Blair Witch Project kind of reminded me of this too. If you're like a kid who grew up in a rural area and you used to just go out into the woods in the night and like kind of freak yourself out with like the shadows and like the the scariness of being in the woods at night, like that's what this that gives me that that childhood horror feeling. Yeah, it's, that's a that's a classic, absolute classic. Yeah. Rachel, we don't really care too much. What can I ask you? What pressing that is, if you don't mind. Oh, it's like I don't even know. It's like is it like the rise it's above? No, it's the earmark. It's the earmark one. Okay, okay. It's been yeah. like reissued a bunch of times, right? So. Yeah. Everyone should check that out. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about it, but it sounds really interesting. <laughs> it's it is. <laughs> Keep the lights on, Jim. Keep the lights on when you when you listen. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's great. Is it my turn? Yeah, Jim, your turn. I got a classic here. Oh. I have to get out of this plastic. So there's a glare up. I mean, everybody knows this record, but I was listening to it really close this week. Nice. There you go. <laughs> nice. All right. What can I say, right? <sighs> so good. It's That's really so good. good. And, and, so uh, good. <laughs> I remember when I first, I, this is the same copy I got in like 88. 88, yeah. yeah and uh, I remember I brought this home and my roommates were like, what the fuck are you playing there? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, I mean, there's it, it, looking back at it, it's kind of a crossroads of worldwide hardcore before the internet. There's a lot of influence going through there, like international influence. Um, a lot of Swedish. I even pick up on like SSD control in there and you know those breakdowns and yeah. their intros and then even some of the keyboard stuff I was listening to it get you know when you listen to it again it reminded me of the keyboard like work in a full metal jacket you know <laughs> it was like you know some of the 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 
parts they had in there. And I was like, but, uh, but, you know, I know, I know there was a controversy with, with Peaceville ripping them off or something. Yeah. And, uh, multinational. Yes. Very good. But, when you, you know, looking back at it, it, wow. It, it did. It was like, you know, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of crossroads in that record and, uh, it, you know, including the, like, you know, you know, they're from the same area as Black Sabbath. You can hear that dark part of UK, yeah. industrial UK, you know, and kind of rubbing off on them. But, uh, but I prefer that mix maybe because it was the first one I heard and I know they remix it and gave a big F you to peace bill. But, uh, um, but th this one always sticks with me. I think it's I agree. Okay. I really I agree. like I agree. the yeah. song that sticks with me off of this is No Religion. The whole drum intro to that and how it just trudges along. It's like power, pure fucking power. But then there's other songs where I hear, I hear like SSD control in there, you know, it's like, you know, like, or like a siege part, you know, like Boston snub, you know, that it, the power. So I, 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 I listened to this affectionately this week. I was just like, Classic, one of the best classics. Yeah. I'm really glad you didn't mention Discharge. People always lazily like say Discharge. I don't really hear him. like. I'm, I'll say I'll that. that to my notes. I just <laughs> didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. People, that's the first thing people just say like, oh, the, you know, the new Discharge. I was going to say Mau Mau's. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when that came out. It was like, oh, yeah, this is a good one. So it's, here we go. But, so, uh, you know, it's still it's still pretty dark and scary record too. You know, and um, it, and I think it's held up for for like yeah, being recorded it's back in like eighty seven yeah. or whatever. I think it's definitely held up above the rest. You know? I was going to ask everybody: Do you think they ever made like a better record than that one? They had some interesting parts of records. They had good songs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the full on record, that's the one. I think so too. I, I agree. Uh, and when you're saying like a lot of their records like don't sound good just like the sound of them is not like at least to me that it, like that record i think sounds good like i'd agree with you about the mix you know but, but I, I know of, that you know like they like i said they had a, a beef or they got ripped off or whatever it was but uh but that this mix was the first time i ever heard them so i think that's why it resonates with me it's perfect I think a lot of bands from England yeah, at that time have like, it's great, it's amazing. Yeah, every it's song is just like amazing. Yeah, it, it's slow, fast, it does everything. <laughs> all the speeds. All the speeds. <laughs> all the speeds. <laughs> On, off. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, loud, <laughs> talking, yelling. You know, I'll just forget, I lived in a punk rock house at the time, and go figure. And, and my roommates, when I brought that home, were just like, what is this crap? They came in my room to tell me how much they hated it. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> What's that song that's like, let's all be friends? What's that called? That's a little bit slow one or let's all be friends. Means to an end. That's oh, it. yeah, means to an end. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a great one. I like, I like that. But, but listen, listen to it again. I, I Something about those intros and outro with the, the synth, and I don't know who did it, but then I said, what does this remind me of? And I looked up. Full metal jacket, and that's what it was. And I was like, oh. it's not that exactly, but it's like that. It's like the part where uh, Private Pot, that that the scene where he's going in to, to kill the drill sergeant, you know, that that whole synth part score, you know, it's like reminiscent of that. Classic from the UK, UK eighty eight. I love our cassette. <laughs> It's either that or stupid. <laughs> Pam is next. Yes, Pam, what's your second record of the day? Oh. There it is. Uh, Talking of <laughs> classics. But, uh... Yep. I love this record so fucking much. Um, I already liked them already, you know, going to see shows for years. And then this thing come out to like, what, 96? And uh, it was a shit you'd never heard. And then the this the record, the songs that you had heard, like in a different way, like in the recording where you can hear like the noise from him standing outside talking. I think he was talking to 
to the pee. guy's kid outside yeah. you can hear it between the songs. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but the drums on this, I, I just this is I've worn it to death. Um, I definitely need a new copy. I think there is a reissue of it, but I this is the old one. Um, but yeah, I still listen to this, it still holds up. Um, just love this record. It's perfect. It ever I remember the, the first time I heard that, uh, was it Red Bone in the City song? And it, it kind of sounds like yeah, the, the Sex Pistols, Pistols were popping. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's like, like the you know, the 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 deep roots of the bad brains, you know? yeah, <laughs> as they were forming. Is that your yeah, favorite? Yeah, it was like they recorded it in like 79 and then it wasn't even, it was never released until uh, 96. So. Yeah. I wonder why. I guess they kind of changed the sound a lot. And they did. Um, yeah, it was recorded they in that, that inner ear studio or whatever. Mm. It was like a four track. And then they ended up like just recording all this other shit. They moved to New York yeah. and the manager had said something like, um, they were releasing all this other shit. So that was on the back burner. <laughs> and then they just right, finally right. came out with it. I think when everything fell apart, really, because that was, I think when yeah. HR left. Yep. Is that your favorite? HR and Earl. Is that your favorite Bob Brains album? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like the, I like the, um, the pay to come seven inch though. I like that too, but and band in DC, but, still my favorite it doesn't you know i'm not a, i like reggae enough but like you know this doesn't have any of that on it <laughs> it's just true pocket. and it's yeah. it's just the recording you know you hear other bands with shitty recordings and they sound terrible this makes it sounds better because of it like it's just so good i, I so, remember seeing them back in the 80s and people would be yeah. like in such a state of euphoria before they were coming on, and, it, and like you'd see people walk around, hey, the bad brains are up next. <laughs> you know, it's like they were just super excited. And, and, and but the, the other thing I always admired of them too is how they come out hard and heavy, like fast four fast songs, and then they do a reggae, you know, and yeah. chill the crowd out. They would do four more fast, you know, four to five other fast ones, and then another reggae song, and then four out, you know, like, and, and yeah. it was just like a roller coaster, right? <laughs> well, then it, I didn't even realize, I don't know how, I didn't know this, but he wasn't the first singer. He was actually the rhythm guitarist at first. It was that Sid oh. McRae guy that was the first singer, um, even after they changed their name to Bad Brains, because he's the reason why they called themselves the Bad Brains. Oh. Um, so it was he was playing rhythm guitar before he started singing. And then when Sid left the band, he started singing because the guy would come up on stage, sing a couple of songs and his girlfriend would come up and beat the shit out of him. And then <laughs> HR would look over the lyrics. <laughs> so that's, that's just a crazy story. But uh, um, I don't know why I didn't know that, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that until. I was this, no, this I <laughs> I really like I was that, trying um, to figure out why they didn't really release it until, you know. I'm a big fan of that, the Youth Are Getting Restless live oh, album. Love that, too. That's a good one. Like, well, it's all a their live show is great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was around the time that I saw them in Europe, so it kind of takes me back to the seeing them at that, around that time, like 87, something like that. UK 88. UK <laughs> <laughs> <He's the> 88. <laughs> All right, is it my turn again? Oh, all no. right. <laughs> We're skipping you. It's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wow, so, car. Is that your it's not mine. It's not my car. <laughs> Oh start? yeah, no, that's that's the traditional Philly four wheeler, oh, yeah. um, so, like Friday night party. Yeah, we have the that's... garbage man truck that comes. Did we hear in about forty five minutes? Stuff. Keep, keep it, listen up. Yeah. <laughs> garbage truck. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's cast our minds back to last Friday, um, <laughs> the record that I showed last Friday because it kind of ties into my next pick. This record may be 
listen to the next one. There's a connection here. This is this band called uh, Jesus. Riesco. It's new from Chicago. It's amazing. Everyone should buy it. Always cheating with your extras. No, but it's not. <laughs> It's not an extra. <laughs> it's an, I know you had it last it's, week. It, 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 it's, an, it's an enhancement. <laughs> <laughs> an extension. <laughs> an all, all he's getting royalties for this record. That's why he's put it on twice. <laughs> just, 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 just in case no, but, no, people didn't watch last week, just a little reminder. But this band made me listen to my pick of the day. That's, my, that's why I'm uh, showing this record. Mexican punk, Mexican hardcore. This record has just been reissued and I picked it up a few weeks ago. Whew. I think everyone might know this record. Maybe. Let's have a look. Let's see. I love the cover on this too. This one. Oh. This one. oh. Heregia. Is that how you pronounce it? Heregia. Yeah. Resiste el al sistema. Originally came out in 1990. That's my pronunciation. Any good? There you go. Got reissued a couple of years ago by Esos Malditos Punks. Oh. Mexican punk. I, I, I never can say Mexican hardcore. It doesn't seem right to me. Uh, I mean, this is like punk. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's not hardcore. I don't know why I, I just can't say Mexican hardcore. It's Mexican punk. Yeah, it's amazing. Look at the artwork. It's like a, can, what was it? It's like a eagle... Like with a sword attacking a knight <laughs> on a horse. Is that why you got it? That's why I got it's it. Not for the music. <laughs> it's like some like third tier new wave of British heavy metal record from like 1982, but it's Mexican. <laughs> oh no, we lost Pam again. Oh, Pam. oh just when it was getting good. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's okay. No, that's okay. Yeah. That. That's just the internet connection. That's just the internet connection. I can get. Oh, Thanks. Pam just skipped ahead of Jim. Okay. Yeah, Mexican punk. It's got like the dentist drill guitar, which is like too quiet, but we like that, right? We don't want it too loud. And then like the really loud drums, the really loud bass, and then the like super loud vocals that are like mixed way too high up. We wouldn't want it any other way. And it's like really gruff vocals that's almost like Sakavi level of kind of like gruffness and anger. Now, this is like one of the kind of landmark Mexican punk records I'm told. It's, uh, I love it. It's amazing. Do you know what city they were from in Mexico by any chance? Oh, I didn't said... look that up, Jim. Anybody, let us know in the comments where they're from in Mexico. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. I mean, you know, who else we got? Massacre 68. Yeah. Tox really Toxico. This band is up there. Uh, with all those bands, and I guess they put out some more records, but I know for a fact that this band were influenced by this band. You can hear it. Like that. Mexican punk, not hardcore, Mexican punk sound. Which are, uh, remixed by or remastered by Jack Control. I don't think that needed to happen. We loved, I love Jack, but I don't think it was necessary, but it happened anyway. <laughs> you would say hardcore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean though? Like I can't it's not it's not hardcore, it's punk. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like it's it's, also jumpy. Like, it's got that jumpy gallop. I gotta make it's just the drums, it's like boom 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 yeah, boom, you, boom, boom. you know, like that like really simple drums, you know. But like it's so good. That's my my, my my third. I'm so busy. My my third pick of the day is some Mexican hardcore reissue. It's a classic. Check it out if you like uh, if you like Mexican punk. Did I just say Mexican hardcore? Mexican. What's it called again? Hey, oh. You're gonna make me say it again, fam. Yeah. <laughs> say it again. Yeah. 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 Solution Mortal, yes. So, so. That, that, that's another good one, yeah. Resista al Sistema, which probably means resist the system. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Beautiful Mexican punk. There you go. I like that cover. Me too. It's beautiful. It's just the icing cover. on the cake. Yeah. It's the cover. Yeah. It's like kind of pencil drawn too, which you probably can't see. Oh, yeah, yeah, it looks like high school, like someone who is in yes. high school who is very... Well, you would like write on the back of your notebook. Like, yeah. 
One day it's I'm going to be in a band, in a band and this is going to be the cover of our first album. Oh, all right. There we go. They've got some proper information now. There we go. There we go. <laughs> the conquest of Mexico. So Don't where you. are they from? That's, yeah. Carlos, oh. where, are, where are these bands? What city? What town? Or what? what town? Yeah, what city? Yeah. What town? Yeah, let's know. Let's know in the comments. That would be region. very helpful. But that's helpful. Conquest of Mexico. Yeah. The cover, yeah. The, the cover, cover, yes. The cover, yeah. yeah. See. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is after the alcohol. Oh, I think from Mexico City. Um, hey, from Mexico City. There you go. Thanks, Carlos. Right. That's a big help. Right. Thanks, man. Cheers. Hey, Mexico City. Mexico City. There you go. Epe. Classic Mexican P U N K. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Mexico City 90. There we go. Mexico 90. All right. Rachel, what's your third pick? Okay, the next one. It's hip hop record. Oh, this is oh, Marlo. Yeah. I don't know if it says Marlo. It says Marlo on the back. Um, so Marlo is a collaborate collaboration between um, the producer Larange and Solemn Brigham, um, and it's uh, from North Carolina. And it's like, I mean, my taste in hip hop is very basic. I like like '90s conscious hip hop, and this has this has a modern sound to it, but it has a lot of that like style to it, um, like the real obvious shit, like De La Soul and things like that. Um, and it's like super super catchy, um, like super like smart lyrics. Um, and I just think it's awesome. I don't know. I, I like can't speak. I, I shouldn't have probably shouldn't have done this because I can't speak like articulately about hip hop and, and the components of the music. <laughs> but it's tough, one, right? Yeah, and it's, it's and it's really like um, musical, um, which you know, which I I prefer. North Carolina. North Carolina. I don't know where in North Carolina actually, but North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff so yeah, Marlo, this is Jeff. Her, as the name implies, their their third album. <laughs> and I scared that like more, and that's new, right? It's like a modern day record, right? Yeah, it's new. Yeah, it came out just like again, I think last year. Um, I'm gonna say it's a modern day hip hop is a bit of a minefield. I've got to say with like the some of the new styles that are coming in and everything. You know what I mean, like the mumbling and all that kind of stuff. Oh. <laughs> <you> know, like, <laughs> that's not like that though, right? That's not like that. I, I was actually at a bar the other night. They, they had, uh, it was old school hip hop DJs, but they were doing vinyl. And, and it was it was pretty awesome. And uh, this is old school hip hop. I'm an old guy. <laughs> but uh, we, were, we were talking about mumble rap. We're like, yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> there's, still, still, there's still good stuff coming out. It's kind of one of those things where I'm you sure. have to know you know like beyond like what's in the mainstream and what's, right 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 I'm sure. yeah. Yeah. um there's still lots of good stuff and there's lots of like uh, actually like some of the most interesting and modern and weird shit that's going on right now is going on in hip-hop like kind of avant-garde stuff um yeah so it's not uh, like actually, yeah, again, it's like just an outsider right to this uh, what's what's that pam I said there's a lot of different styles going on right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Like, coming yeah. Up, yeah, and coming around. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I should tell I'm still stuck like, in I'm the 90s. Catch that ride, but I'm not this sure. is very, like, this is very, Marlowe is very comfortable for people who like 90, 90s. Okay. Terrace <laughs> one. <like, laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> it's not yeah. quite like that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm, well, not a little bit, I'm, I am stuck in the 90s with hip hop. I, I admit to that. But if, if something came your way, I'm sure you'd embrace oh, it. Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't know where to look. I guess you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't, if 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 you don't listen to it on the radio or whatever, like right. there aren't even that many shows here, no. really. That's what I mean. Yeah, I actually, um, underground too. Not to plug my. So I also have a radio show. And it's on WPRB in Princeton, New Jersey. And um, on Sunday nights from 10 to 12, there's an 
excellent hip hop show. All right. It's done by an older guy, but he like so there is a lot of older stuff on it, but also like new, and it's all like underground hip hop. Like right. it's a really really good show. So um, it's not you have to listen to it like on the internet while it's on. He doesn't put it up um, after and like that. But if you're free on a Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, it's like well worth your time. To keep up. Everybody, <laughs> check it out. Check it out. We check a comment. I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, wrote it down. <laughs> I got my sparkly pencil. There you go. All right, Jim. First off, hey Carlos, say hello to Salinas for me. I saw the comment. Yeah, he. Uh, that's Salinas, good. Um, hey. There you go. Yeah. They're my friends in Mexico City. There you go. That's that. There you go. Yeah. Wonderful man. Wonderful man. All right. All right. This is Japanese. Oh, and it's very metal. Be? What could it be? <laughs> I saw them a few years back, and I revisited this record the last several days. And man, does it kick ass! Oh, sweet! <laughs> Beautiful. We saw them in New York City. I think it was the only U.S. date. They played Gates. some metal festival. Gates. 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 If you like Bathory type metal, um, this this they had a whole bunch of seven inches and splits and things. I think this is the only full length. They might have a live one. They too. have like some mini LPs and a split LP with uh, yeah. Mech and Skull as well. But that's their. But they uh, said it's their first like full length LP. Yes. Yeah. Holy crap, man! This this is like carpet bombing. This is a really good record. <laughs> it's just like, but, uh, I'm happy to have this record. But, you know, it's like akin to like maybe a Japanese style, like Midnight in that kind of realm of metal. Yeah. You know, a lot of, of uh, uh, double kick and fury, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, Dan, you know, roll a fat one and have a couple drinks and rocks, bang your head at this fucker. But, uh, Gates, uh, back from the grave. This, I mean, look it up. It's great. It's man, it's if great you're here for metal, this this will give you everything you want. That's <laughs> like some Motet and some like new wave of British heavy metal in there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's. I saw a lot. I was like, somebody said it's the only USB. I was like, what? <laughs> How could that be? Ooh. Yeah, they don't play live that much, even in Japan. So they just yeah, flew out for like a fest kind of deal? Yeah, it was at St. Vitus in Brooklyn. But I remember, didn't Stack put out one of their records too? He did. He put out, yeah. it's called um, Total Death, I'm going to say. Yeah, Staff, the, it's a compilation of like some of the songs. It was from Staff. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, Staff in the UK. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah it, it, Staff, Staff picks winners. <laughs> God admires the evil soul. That's what Gates stands for. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, with songs like Mr. 666, Screaming <laughs> <laughs> Sinner, <laughs> Demon Crusade. There's some uh, good lineage, though. Like the guitar player used to be in Life, if we, we all know Life. Oh, really? Yeah. And then the singer was in Church of Misery and uh, Assault, another Japanese hardcore mm. band. That Used to play with DSB a lot. Oh, nice. yeah. There's a that lineage there. Yeah, the you team. know, they, they definitely have a, a, a like a, a punk vibe to them. Yes, too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, um, my cup of tea. My cup of tea. <laughs> Good band. I, I, I've never seen them live. Like I said, they don't play live that often. But, uh, that's a, that's a classic. It's my metal pick. <laughs> yes. Did anyone notice we have you've got to have a metal pick? Well, get a metal pick from <laughs> yeah, I don't have one. No, no, I neither do I. Neither do I. Neither do I. <laughs> metal punk death squad. Yes. Yeah. That is. I've got the patch. All right, Pam, what's your next pick? I don't think I ever even see this band in the group at all. All right. 
but I love the police. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so good. I like was listening to it all week. Um, and I was like, no, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to put it on the show. You know, it's not punk. And But I fucking love this record. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No. Yeah. <laughs> My next pick isn't either. Yeah, the first. But a lot of Pittsburgh punks hate the police, so I fucking love them. I don't know why uh, they hate them. Called the police. The timing hey, go. is so good to me. Yeah. The first like, rock show I ever went to, and actually one of the few like big rock shows that I've ever been to, because I'm just too punk and have only gone to punk shows, um, was staying with Concrete Blonde and Vinks. Kind of <laughs> it was I like saw. shit. I mean, it was a shit period of staying. Like, I, I'm not <laughs> proud of this. Um, Concrete Blonde was pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, I loved it. I loved it. I was like 12 and I loved it. Um, but uh, yeah. And I love the police. Like, I, I listened to um, <laughs> Outlando some more, like, um, like so much that my parents yeah. wanted to kill me. <laughs> I, I saw that Ghost of the Machine tour. That's now I'm giving away my age. But uh, <laughs> um, I saw that tour and the, and the go go's <laughs> opened up for him. And blew the police off the stage. Oh, uh, I can see that. And, and yeah. The Go Go's were brand like they were just getting big, and and uh, and I was like, wow. It was all the police were downhill after the Go Go's. I was like, wow. A friend of mine saw that saw the police play at Tomorrowland at Disney World. It's like they were the future band. It was like before they were really big. They were like, oh, the future was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they played for a decade too. Do you remember the decade in Pittsburgh, Rachel? I think I'm pretty yeah. sure they played there as well. Oh yeah. Before they yeah. Um, my police stories. I used to when I was like 10, 11, 9, I used to like have a little radio cassette player and it wasn't stereo. You only get like AM or FM radio, what do you what do we call it? And I would like tape songs off the radio, right? And make like mixtapes for myself. And then yeah. one day, like for Christmas, I got a radio with like stereo and I could pick up like a radio one in stereo. And the first song I recorded like in stereo was Walking on the Moon by the police. I remember how, I couldn't believe how amazing it sounded like in stereo. And that, that's a great sounding song anyway. I just remember that. It's like, that's my, yeah, my whole intro. Is, like, is home taping is king of music. Record, recording in stereo was like the police. That's big I think Invisible is my favorite on that record. But my favorite of theirs all together is like Bring on the Night, I think is my favorite. That's a good song. Police that one's song. like a little bit, that album's like a little bit, not dark, but it's kind of a little bit darker. Invisible Sun. Is yes. Big, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that song. Yeah, Invisible Sun. Okay. Police. I used to get Cold Sting or Billy Idol. When I was a kid, anyone that had like bleach blonde hair was like Sting or <laughs> Billy Idol. Are you bleached your hair? <laughs> yeah, of course I did. <laughs> no, back in the back in the day, you know. <laughs> oh, I Billy, oh, I Sting, you know. In the car. <laughs> Billy. My next pick is not too like dissimilar from that, really. I've got. I'm gonna say, Bebop Deluxe. Any fans? Oh. Now, here's my <laughs> no, yes. here's my story about that. I tried to get into them like 15 years ago, and I like, I couldn't. That was the axe victim, like with the guitar and the axe, like in on, on the guitar axe victim. That's a bebop deluxe record, right? That there, there you go. Came up right away. Axe victim. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I couldn't get into them at that time, and I kind of just forgot about bebop deluxe for like. 15 years and then the other day like I was in the shop uh, I, for some reason I just bought this record I have no idea why I bought it I guess it was cheap that's probably why I bought it but it's uh, Bill Nelson right Bill Nelson from Bebop Deluxe has he has like an he has like, a, like 230 albums something out but, yeah I like Bill Nelson I haven't really yeah. listened to Bebop Deluxe that much but I love like Bill Nelson's Red Noise and yeah this is my most played record of like the past week or so. It's like so easy on the ears. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like a mini LP. It's called Chimera. 
Oh, well, now I've got to explain it right. I guess it's like avant-garde pop using all like the technology from like '83, like kind of like Kate Bush was doing, all the like, new like technology. But it's kind of a, a pop record, but it's like out there. It's like a bit avant-garde, a little bit like arty. It's so good, and he's got like um, Yuki Takahashi from the Yellow Magic Orchestra on this record, which like really adds a lot to it because he's amazing. And uh, Mick Khan from Japan plays the bass. And I love Japan, so that's like an added bonus as well. It's oh, like you like Japan? I like Japan, <laughs> <laughs> not the band, not the country. Well, I like. I guess I like both of them. <laughs> Mick Khan, but that like. What's it? Fretless bass can be a little hit or miss, you know. But uh, great, six songs, avant-garde, like art pop, beautiful. Yeah, Bill Nelson definitely has that knack for like being legitimately weird as hell, but always catchy, always yeah. like you can, you know, listenable um, at the same time. Yeah, it's so good. I've been like listening to it like over and over and over, and I kind of picked up a couple of, of his other records from the eighties. I haven't listened to those yet. He has like, like I said, like over 200, 200 records out. So yeah, this I think like the stuff from the eighties might be the best. I don't know. So. Yeah. You like? You got any? I have no oh. knowledge of this at all. So I'm listening and learning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if like anybody likes that kind of era of. I might put people off now, but I do think this is true. That era of like King Crimson, where they had like Adrian uh, Ballou with like Discipline mm -hmm. and Beat, Three of a Perfect Pair, it also kind of reminds me of that. It's like, it's funny though, because when I look, let's get Pam back on. Sorry, hang on. Let's go into Prague, Bree. <laughs> this is what, this is what, this is what I was going to come to. It's hilarious because when I, you know, before the show, I was kind of looking, looking it up a little bit just to get like, an info. And like, there was like re reviews, right? So the first review of this record is on like prog, like progarchives.com. And the next review is on postpunk.com. And then <laughs> both sites gave it a good review. So that kind of says a lot, right? About this record. You know, it's like prog people like it and like post punk people like it. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's definitely that's inspired. Cause like I said, I like I like Bill Nelson post Bebop Deluxe, and I've always I've tried some Bebop Deluxe and have been like, eh. But yeah, I yeah. think it is a matter of finding the right the right stuff. So. Me, yeah, I, I, wow. yeah, I'm gonna actually look up more Bebop Deluxe in the future because of, because of this record. Yeah, Chimera, which is like a mythical three a beast made out of like three different animals, right? So that's what a Chimera is. I was wondering, is it? I thought that was Monster X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, overthinking it, thinking, well, is it like called Chimera? It's like Bill Nelson and the guy from YMO and Mick Khan. Is that like the three? They three, form like three, Voltron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that I'm overthinking that. That, that was why. <laughs> <laughs> Great record. Beautiful record. Great pop record. Yeah. That's my, that's my fourth pick. Right. Well, this doesn't. Sorry, all my records fell down. Um, this doesn't lead in for that at all. This is punk as fuck. Um, maybe oh. it has. It, there's some things on it that aren't so punk. Um, this is rock taken to roll in. It's like it's just in a plain paper sleeve <laughs> um, with a big pink booklet. Um, and this is a, a compilation of Dutch bands made up of all women. Recorded, I think it was recorded in 1980. So, yeah, November 8th, 1980. Wow. And it was released in the magic year of 1981 when, like, an insane number of, like, post-punk records and with women singing came out it was like it's unbelievable like just in in holland there was like probably like 100 you know just mm -hmm. in like i'm sorry the netherlands just in the netherlands um and um this has got the neeks who had some other records um who are like punk like very like kind of basic rudimentary punk um pinoffs the same I don't think the pinoffs, I'm not sure if they had anything else. 
um, that was released. Um, they were like 15 years old. Um, Pink Plastic and Panties, who are more a little like post punky synth poppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Jim was best pair on them. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the Removers, who are like Scott. Um, but very like again like kind of rudimentary <laughs> ska um and yeah it's a great comp it's on um, rock taken to roll means rock against the roles which is like the gender roles um and it's on a label that's called rock against records which apparently was run by a guy who's kind of a hit, but um <laughs> um but yeah it's fantastic like so it's um yeah, it's just a great mix of things. It's it's all live recording, which weirdly, wow. I mean, there's like, there's a decent, and it sounds really good for like, you know, it sounds excellent. Um, and it has like, uh, a, there's just actually like a lot of bands from, from Netherlands in particular, but also, um, also in general, but yeah, especially in Netherlands, there's a lot of live, um, there's a lot of live uh, recordings that got released very often as like the only thing. Like this, sorry, I'm doing a bonus. <laughs> the Nitwit. Oh, that's really good, yeah. Nitwit, also live. Um, and I, I think there were some squats that partic- like had like really good live recordings. Isn't like um, the Nitwit has some connection to BGK? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, Nitwits yeah. is pretty BGK. Okay, Gutterflies, okay. though. I mean, the Nitwits are amazing. Mm-hmm. They're great. Gutterflies are like the secret weapon on this. This Gutterflies are um, again like kind of post punky, really but kind of but aggressive and like really like sardonic and mean lyrics. I really love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really amazing. Um, so yeah, sorry. This is my like Dutch a Dutch feast. Dutch. They're really good. No one's reissued either of these. Reissue oh, really? These. Reissue these. Someone reissue. get on it if you're watching in the comments, whoever you are. <laughs> reissue these. Hard to get. <laughs> wow. My turn. Your turn, Jim. All right, I'm going back for another classic. Back to the UK. Um, dark, Anarcho. Ooh. And, and, and scary. I'm getting on the scary tip again. This is always a go-to record for me, too. I've always loved this record since the 80s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Exit stance. That's what- <laughs> this I, I just love the whole the, you know it's like you know killing joke derivative but I'm motor hate in, in the anarcho scene and of the time and uh um it Christian militia is my favorite track on this and uh but uh this always sounded super dark yeah and and brooding and you know uh, I'm on that theme tonight. Maybe it was that kind of a week for me. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but, uh, but, you know, go home and listen to an angry record. But, um, um, you know, this it, this has a deep sound to it, too. Like, very, very deep sound. And and not too many other records on Motor Hate sound like this. But it's, it's been a go-to for me for decades. Definitely yeah. stands out in that era of like anarcho punk. Sure. But uh, did you ever catch him, Mike? You know what? I might have done. <laughs> but um, can't remember. But uh, I know they had a they, they they did something before the pandemic. It just wasn't as good as as this. No, it's hard to recount. This is their pinnacle. No. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's a, it, a, a mini album. There's only a few tracks, several tracks on here. But god damn, this is one record that sticks out in my collection. And I was listening to it this week, and I was like, oh, this is going to go up. I'm going to pick that one. You know, same like Doom. I was like revisiting, you know, and, and, and taking a closer listen, you know, find, or you break through and figure something out, you know. But, uh, but uh, you know, 
Jesus, I mean, you can't get more real than what they're talking about, you know. You know, uh, you know, a lot of animal rights stuff in here. Yeah, and, most you know, of the songs are like about animal rights, right? Yeah, Image. a lot of them. Yeah. But, uh, 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 you know, uh, also, you know, Christian Militia, it seemed like a, a pretty nasty take on the whole Troubles era of Northern Ireland. So, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this, I mean, this is one of my top picks in my entire collection, you know? Yeah, you were saying they put out new music. Did they like reform or have they been they around? They reformed and they recorded some stuff. You can find it online. Yeah. But it just, you know, it it, it just doesn't compare. With all, I mean, with all the members? I don't know. I didn't look that, I'm getting, I'm getting that deep. But, but, uh, uh, but Jesus Christ, I just remember, you know, like, man, if you're driving on a dark road at night and you put that on, man, you'll scare yourself. Like you were saying, going out in the woods and tripping out on your set. You can do that with that record very easily. <laughs> That's some driving around the reservoir at night because you don't want to yeah. go back to your parents' Who's house. Who's out of the woods, Blair Witch? Sorry, my very <laughs> rural youth memory. They should do a split record with Thomas. Wicker Man kind of. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, like a lot of the new, like more harder edged, Post-punk bands are taking quite a bit of influence from that, that record. I would yeah, say. it's it's it, it you know the drumming on it. You know, it's it's kind of tribal, but not overtly tribal. Yeah. You know, but it's big drums, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it it just sounds giant in a big room. You know, uh, yeah, um, you know what? It almost like that. You just made me think of is um, <laughs> if I can like grab it. No, I can't grab it for I am. Um, Exploited horror epics. Oh. Yes. You know that like exploited tries to do killing joke or whatever the hell they That's were a trying great to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was my first one of the first punk records I ever heard as a kid. Like a friend of mine had a tape of it and I listened to it and I was like, whoa. <laughs> no, I, mean, I love I love the exploited. Like I love them so much. I love like stuff from the 90s like um it's embarrassing but um oh. the whole, yeah horror epics is a weird introduction to that's that, very that's how my taste in punk is so weird <laughs> uh, another one is that vex 12 inch it's kind of similar vex yeah sanctuary that hard like rolling yeah. drums like yeah, it rolls like a punk yeah. it's it's dancey a bit too yeah. you know it's almost there Definitely yeah. a lot of crossover with like post punk and anarcho punk yeah. and gothic and, and back, back in those days, right? No, back, back in those days, it back in those that, days, yeah, it worked. Yeah, that, on that record at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, what's your fourth pick? Fourth record of the day. Personal favorite because they're friends of mine. Oh, oh. and it's new. I just got it like a month ago. I have all their other shit, but I uh, never seem to get this one. And then it's blue, which I love. And it's that a whole hole. But yeah, I love this lineup too. I love the lineup um, and just what can you say it's just fucking from start to finish like it starts out perfect it's just so good yeah it's their best amazing. record it's their best record by far is that, sorry, is that two or three um, i forget two two. two two okay and yeah. i listen to them too yeah i like three a lot though i do Me like too. three yeah. a lot and I'll, I think because I'll, yeah. I saw them live so much on three and then three has like wes and noel which i love and they weren't on this one so i think but yeah this is definitely the best one, for sure. I'll tell and you what, Pam. Huh? Um, Bill, so when we were worried you wouldn't get into the this thing at all, we are like, maybe Bill can show some records. And Bill pulled out that record. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, then he was with me in spirit. I was with him in spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, okay. I, I love that's it. Good. And then, like, Sean did the artwork on it, which is great. He also played on this record, and yeah yeah graham is like one of the best guitarists like period like, he should be he should be famous guitarist like he is so good well, he, 
he ever tell you the story of him and ZZ Top? Yeah. 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 Big, 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 Billy Gibbons was like, oh, Grant and Lecherous Gay is my favorite guitarist right now. Yeah. What? Yeah. He said that. And that was like, Graham was like, this is the best thing ever. I just remember That's when funny. he cut his hand severely and couldn't play. And then he played with his other hand. Like, amazing. He's just yeah. fucking amazing. I like that and he's, he's very, a really nice person. And he's very tasteful. He could like overdo it right, but he keeps it just like in that yeah. like, kind of, not, not Thin Lizzy, but kind of that very tasteful, like 70s. Warm, yeah. There know. was him, him and Grande together too are just a perfect like they're so good together. I love their style. Yeah, and I and love Jimmy continues with the lecherous gaze too, you know. There were just like I, there was a lot of bands kind of doing that style at that time, doing that like rock and rolly, like we're punks, but we're rock and rolly yeah. thing. But Annihilation <laughs> time, like I don't really care for that usually. But Annihilation yeah, is so above and beyond. Yeah, when he, oh God, like 70s rock with, mixed with punk, oh God, what's going to, you know. But, it was like, it just about to be way too much. It was just way too much of it at that time, yeah, too. The first time I ever heard him, I saw him live. I said, man, that was Black Sabbath meets Black Flag. And I got punched <laughs> in the face. Or, or Blast, actually. Blast. Uh, Grand Blast, Blast. Yeah. yeah. That's our bond, because I was like, I love them, too. And he's like, they're one of my favorites. But uh, I think Jimmy evened out that a little bit, too, with his snottiness and oh, shit. Like, it worked. Yeah. I um they came to Japan, yeah. Ten years. I want, I can't remember how long. But oh man, I don't often get down the front and get sweaty. I did on that night. Ooh, so good. I was dancing. That was his dream to go there too. So he was like, that was the. He wouldn't. Jimmy wanted to go there so bad. That was right. his dream. So they were yeah. amazing. I'll yeah, tell. Yeah. <laughs> they played in this like tiny little club. Yes, and I too. <laughs> I, Use a song. Yeah, I, I also feel like Annihilation Time is almost directly responsible for Skullfest because yeah. Bill, when Bill and I got married, we had a, a, a couple of big shows, like as our um, our like wedding fest or whatever, and Annihilation mm -hmm. Time of their own, like Jimmy basically, I think, and some other people like arranged to like play in the woods after. Like it wasn't our idea. They were just like, we're gonna play a wood show too. And I'm pretty sure that that Dusty was then like, I wanna do something like that every year where like there's some shows and like big bands play and then there's shows in like the woods and in the like tennis courts and whatever. Um, so that's I don't know, that's my narrative of how, how Skull Fest came to be. No, they copied my birthday show. That's what happened. No, they they wanted, copied my the first, birthday. The first, one was their, the first one was their birthday, so it was in the fall. And it was after my 40, 40th birthday party. That's And I always make fun of them about that. I'm like, you copied how to me and made money because my birthday show is free. <laughs> but Pointless Fest was Greg and Tony's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like I've heard like a lot of people tell me the story about uh, annihilation time in the woods over the years. I think yeah. it was like some legendary. There was thing. yeah, and also that's it was also the show not to be like, but like also that was also the show where um, U.S. Senator John Fetterman introduced municipal waste. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know John, when, when John Fetterman, no, no idea. He's, 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 uh, he's like he's a, a senator now, right? He's a senator. Yeah, yeah. he was the mayor he of the town where the show was. <laughs> he's a weird oh. man. He's like he was the edgy, cool man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he beat Oz. Is that really an accomplishment? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Going to hardcore shows now as a U.S. senator. Yeah. Oh, God, is it? It's the last round. Holy it's gone shit! So quickly, it's gone so quickly. It's been we've been, been having a good time. That's why, right? I'm glad Pam squeaked because in right on the wire. <laughs> Wait, what, Jim? I'm glad you squeaked in right under the wire. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. We we killed we're, about ten minutes. We're talking about under pressure. <laughs> You, right. you handled it well. Yes. Amazing. 
Oh, it's my turn, right? Your turn. My turn. Cheers. Hang on. All right. Cheers. Last round. Cheers. So I guess last time, I think he's still watching. Jordan Atkins was on. I know he had like he had two records in his hand, and he's like, "Which one would you like me to show?" <laughs> yeah. so, but he, he kind of didn't. He didn't have them. He didn't like. He was had them here, right? So, would like you like? Me, would you like me to show a compilation album that just came out, or would you like me to show something on the same label that just came out? And I was like, show the compilation album. So the compilation album was uh, Heroes of the Night. Oh Two. yeah. Volume I don't two. like it as much as the first one. Actually. That's what people are saying. Yeah, and I, well, I ordered it, but apparently there's like some. I don't some... dislike it, but not as good, right? Yeah, I haven't it's got not as consistent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm going to show the other record that he didn't show because it's on the same label and it's great. Post. French punk, French punk from like seventy-seven, seventy-eight. I, I know which one it is. <laughs> Dogs. Dogs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he showed us that in the after, in the after. Part. Yes, in the after chat, yeah, in the yeah, Patreon yeah. only section. Yeah. <laughs> for fans, is it Patreon only, only section? <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe, everybody. <laughs> like and subscribe. Throw me a dollar. Because... Tip your bartender. Yeah. What was I going to say? Yeah. Same label, right? Reminder Records. Yes, yes. They this out and they put out Brooklyn as well. So I'm going to be honest, I've only listened to this like twice and I was drunk both times, but I think it's fitting because this band like sounds completely drunk when they're playing. It's like, so it's a reissue? It's a re yeah, it's like a compilation of their first seven inch and like their first 12 inch EP, right? From like Charlie Was a Good Boy and Go Away Wanna Go from like 77 and 78. And it's just a compilation of those two on one, one LP. Great stuff. Okay. French punk. Sounds American, though. Sounds like the Dead Boys or the Heartbreakers or right, something like that. Yeah, and confusingly, that. there's a lot of bands called The Dogs who kind of sound like that. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess this is just dogs, like not the dogs. Yeah, dogs, yeah. Like, and apparently, like, this is their best stuff and they kind of went super, like, new wavy and stuff after this. I don't know. Yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't fall off the couch. You made her pass out. <laughs> <laughs> the power of that record. <laughs> yes. They did stuff with this band. Ooh. Oh. They collabed today. More front, like new wave, but so good. So good. All right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, bonus. Oh. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have too much to say. Like I said, I, I got it last week, so I played it twice. I was drunk both times. The band sounds drunk. <laughs> Or like high or whatever. It's like super loose. Yeah, it sounds really like New York to me, like Dead Boys, Heartbreakers. Um, but you know, they bought a French kill by Def Punk. But I think yeah. it sounds American. It sounds American to me. I don't know. It doesn't sound very French, but it's great, great record, classic. How do you say strawberry French? It's like la strawberry. Framboise. Yeah, Framboise. Yeah, the, I thought that, that was raspberry. That record rules. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Oh, why do you? Why do you? Why do you want? Why do you want to know what strawberries is in French, Jim? Because there's a name. That, that's a, a French band called that. Ah, of that okay. era. And okay. Very, very good. Oh, fraise. Oh, soda fraise. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Strawberry soda. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's like fake. That's like punk exploitation. Ah, uh, yeah. It's, really yeah. it's like fake punk. It's but really that good. Song it's cool, bit, bit, <laughs> seven inch. Single. Yeah, it's just phrase, not framboise. That's raspberries. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Jeez, what's this like French lesson? Yeah, French right. lesson. yeah, there's like a drink. There's like a yes. there's a drink that's I only know like flavor. I only know uh, Diablo Month. The devil's mint. <laughs> it's a drink. It's a French drink. <laughs> oh. Dogs from France, not any of the other dogs from all the other countries. Devil Mint. That just sounds. You pretty much scary. can't go wrong right. with bands called Dogs, though. Than an, right? Not that I've heard. Everybody loves dogs. English dogs. I got one sleeping right here. 
All right, that's my last pick. Check it out. It's on Reminder Records. Find. There you go. <laughs> Give me that burger. <laughs> yeah. All that's my last pick today. Dogs. Cool. Oh, my turn. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I was watching this show, and someone was talking about how Crass put all the stems for um, Feeding the 5,000 up on the web, and yes. they just said take them, do what you want with them. Um, but they also said, send us what you did with them. And they released a series of 12 inch singles of the things that they liked the most. I'm not sure who it was exactly from Crass who was like making these decisions, mm -hmm. but um, so this, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna start with my, the side I don't, this is like a split 12 inch single. Um, I'm gonna start with the side I like the least. Um, because the other side is like my big finale. Um, okay. <laughs> so, this is um, Bloody Be Beat Roots. It's called Normal Never Was, is the name of the series. Mm. Um, and this is like, this side is like, this is an Italian, um, you know, kind of an interesting band, the Bloody Beat Roots. They're like, but this is very like EDM. When you think of a remix, like, you know, like, mm dance electronic dance music it's fine it's fine um but the other thing is um like i noticed the other day that on my phone when i type in ch it says chumbawamba <laughs> and then it, and then it says, here, here we go. Right. It's in my autocorrect on my phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's like, I was just hanging out. I was actually hanging out with Al. Um, we met, and he's, he was like, I, I said something about Chumbawamba. He was like, I was like making bets with myself on when you would mention Chumbawamba when we saw each other. <laughs> um, so, I literally like them. They're my favorite band. And um, the kind of guitarist and one of the main songwriters for Chumbawamba is Buff Wally, um, who uh, was also in Passion Killers. And he currently has, um, is like the conductor of a choir, a wow. commoner, commoner's choir based in Leeds. Um, it's like a 20 to 50 person choir that sings, like they sing at protests and they do like, Kind of traditional folk music sounding things they have a song about putting um horse johnson's head on a stake you know um but they're very like you know like disciplined serious choir um and they did g's song um oh. which is it's like it's like there's a new chumbawamba song it's it's them like it's got the choir like singing lines from it it's got Steve Ingram's vocals. It's got the the like instruments, um, and it it has like a dance music feeling to it. But it has like a folk music and this like kind of almost medieval classical feeling to it. It's like super catchy. Um, it's super punk. It's like it's amazing, and it is like it really reminds me of like kind of prime like dance period Chumbawamba, like Anarchy. Um, and uh, nobody from Chumbawamba has done anything this Chumbawamba e since Chumbawamba broke <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I just I like I don't, I didn't see like people like haven't seen anybody talk about this except my my friend who's spat so, like probably Pam oh. knows and, and maybe Jimbo. yeah. Uh, that's like the only other person I've seen talking about this. Um, and this series in general is really cool and really interesting. <laughs> the, the, their choices were very, very interesting. About was, what, was it Paco that brought, brought it up, right? A couple of weeks ago. Was it Paco or Jonah? I forget. It was that week, but I don't remember who it was. It was Paco, who, but, who yeah. 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 So are there many like releases in this series? Like, um, This is the fifth. Fifth one. I think there's at least seven I've okay. seen. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool series. This is the only one I have. I like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, well, I have to have that. <laughs> so. I have a question. I, I meant to ask it at that time and I don't want to appear foolish. Can I, may I ask what a stem is? It's a stereo master. 
it's okay. masters like yeah okay. it's like the master tracks okay so, so it's then, like it's yeah it's like the tracks that make up the recording okay you know, and then like people can do whatever they want separate instruments and vocals and all the different tracks okay. that they're all right. thanks for i meant to ask good like, question <laughs> yeah I it's meant cool. to ask before. I, was like, I mean, I think you know what it was, but I'm glad but you've got to learn exactly something. I've right. got to learn at least one thing every week. So. Yeah. <laughs> I learn what. Yeah. So, like, aren't they like big files? Are they like, they're online, though, right? Yeah. You can just download them. Download them. Anyone I would can guess do they're, pretty, they're big files. I haven't downloaded them, but right. um, I would guess anybody... they're big save would be high quality audio yeah. files. And then anybody can do what, like whatever they want. With them. Yeah, yeah, they don't care. Yeah. Like you can do, wow. you know, which I think is really like, honestly, like when they did that, I was like, that's cool. Like they, that's still, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. they still have like the, the ethics, you know. I wonder if like that wasn't Penny. <laughs> I'm interested I don't to see know. Like, who, yeah, that's which actually... member did that. I, I'd like to kind of know. It sounds it wasn't Steve. <laughs> it doesn't sound like Penny. It sounds like, like, I don't know who, but like, yeah, well, I mean, Steve I makes his living. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Steve makes his living off of crash, I but I don't think he's like super defensive of their copyrights or anything no. like that either. Have you seen that? Like, they just put this US. Well, they're not going to lose any money on it, you know what I mean? Crass is crass, so they're really people still buying their shit. Yeah. So. yeah. I was going to say that they just put like this that USB stick on the chain with the crass logo on it. That's the newest thing they just got. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the that's like the complete opposite of the same is different. Yeah. I want one of those for the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Jim decked out in the latest in digital accessories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can see my floppy bits. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I haven't heard of. So I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm going to look that up. I'm taking right. my notes, Rachel. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you read it down. <laughs> Good. Where's Brian from Drop Dead? Jim Martin's write it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hawk. So you're garbage ice mine. truck. Oh, he's here. Oh, garbage <laughs> truck. <laughs> All, <laughs> Japanese garbage. All right, Jim, what's your, what's your last pick? Well, this isn't Japanese garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of garbage is it? <laughs> what kind of garbage is it? Oh, beautiful. I mean, oh. wait, I don't want to like, talk about that. Nice. Listen, I got this this week, too. Beautiful. I haven't gone far from my turntable except to come here, up here to the office. But, uh, uh, Wow, 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 wow. I've heard some of these tracks before, but uh, uh, Tom at General Speech did a really good job with this, Last Survivors. And, um, you know, I was familiar with some of their tracks, like from like, I just couldn't believe, you know, like, you read the liner notes in here. Uh, some people were talking about like 2000 and, and 2001 being so long ago. And I'm like, that eh, wasn't that long ago. And I'm like, oh, maybe it was. It really <laughs> but, fucking was. It kind of was an old time ago. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, people were using flip phones, but uh, <laughs> but uh, um, God, this is this is really really good. Like I said, I've heard some of it before. I, I think I I have the seven inch uh, from a long time ago too. I didn't look it up yet, but but uh, you know it's it's you know it's pogoy, it's high energy. You know I, I would throw it into the and I, I I've I've talked about order. In skit class on 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 this show before, and uh, this is right up there with it. And uh, there, but there's even some like Scandinavian guitar parts you can pick up in there. And one of them I picked up on was UNICEF. You ever hear UNICEF from Finland? There's a part that reminded me of UNICEF, the Kakamasa. Or, uh, my Finnish is terrible, but uh, um, I was like, wow, that sounds just like UNICEF. That part. <laughs> But uh, high quality. Tom did a great job on this. He always does. It's so yeah. shiny. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's, oh, I, I, I got a powder. What? <laughs> Makeup. But uh, now I'm getting drunk. But uh, but uh, you know, it's got OB strips, it's got posters, it's got everything. But 
I mean, if you're not familiar with this stuff, you don't have the hard to find stuff. It's all there, right? On this the... is really good, and he and I, I think he had it remastered because it sounds so up. You know, it's pretty loud, and it's not heavy. It's just really good high energy punk. Like, yes. you know, picture yourself in a at a, a packed small room punk gig, and you're trying to get through the room. It feels like that. It's not like <laughs> super new. It is super new. The record's new, but the the recordings are from. No, the I know that. I mean, is this release like super? Yes, yeah. came out in nearby Cincinnati, so I would get it or Kentucky, wherever uh, Tom's living. But uh, Philly, I thought. Oh, he's out that way. Yeah. 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 Right. I know. I haven't been able to buy in, in like two months, and it's killing yeah. me. Well, you can find it pretty easy now, but. Yes. Um, it's on its way so hard to find, but that's that's my last pick. And, Great and pick. I, I, I probably listened to it about five times this week, including tonight, just to re refresh myself for it, you know? Super and, catchy, right? Like, yeah, really, yeah. It's, it's, you want Japanese punk, you know? That's the ticket. Last Survivors. Good Last point. Survivors. What what city were they from? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. I was trying to think of it as you were. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. I, mean, I, I feel like it's like not Tokyo. No, it's not. I don't How about that? Is that what that do? How many prefectures do I have to think about? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Where are the last survivors yeah. from? It's not Osaka. Last survivors from? Not Is Osaka. It's not no. Tokyo. Somewhere else. That's all I go it's here, quiet in the chat. It's quiet. Nobody knows where the. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some yeah, because you're supposed to know that. I, I'm supposed to know. <laughs> <laughs> I know the name of the singer though. Does that help? <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's the name of the singer? Mick Jackie. Mick Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Is he is he still around? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that, 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 like, like, actually, that's funny. That is that, that's a valid question because I there's I've seen some reviews on the Japanese record shops about that band, and apparently he was like a bit of an enigma, and nobody really knows like much about him, and they weren't from a big city, that kind of stuff. Um, hey, so. Jack, Jackie's in the liner notes too. Yes, he wrote he wrote yeah, um, yeah. some of the liner notes, right? Yeah. yeah. Hello, Jim, really back. quick, read the liner notes. Like, yeah. She must be in the liner notes, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you can show us. The liner like, notes are so small, though. I had a Let's know at the end, after Pound's pick, just chime in with the name of the city. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, let me pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Come on, let someone let us know in the comments. Niigata. No, they're not, they're not Niigata. I can't read it. <laughs> name name any <laughs> Japanese <Ooh>. city. <laughs> Gifu. I'll keep a beer cold for you. He's got to come by Connecticut and pick it up. <laughs> All right. Tom, what's your last pick of the day? Last pick, and it's not going to be Gizm. So. <laughs> no, no Gizm. <laughs> one of my friends was like, you should post that. And I was like, no. Yeah, I'll let somebody else do that. Yeah, and then I ended too. up being last, which I didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I last think, survivor. This was a toss up <laughs> between two different records, but I had to I had to post like my favorite band of all time. So best record. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not only the best band of all time, but the best record by the best band of all time yes oh, like this is their part. best record i fucking love this Tokyo, so thank you jordan I'm sorry, about technical Tokyo. ecstasy i'm just kidding <laughs> you, i like i like technical ecstasy he said so he said tokyo <laughs> long mark, just saying. No, sorry but yeah this is like i mean <laughs> killing yourself to live is probably my favorite song i like all the depressing songs in case you can't <laughs> <laughs> on record. Um, yeah. Fucking what? You can't really say anything about it. It's just so fucking good. And I love the fucking cover and the back cover and the 
and the inside. It just fucking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Love them. Love them. No, yeah. National Acrobat. That's a good one. Right? Yeah. I mean, fuck. Sabracadabra, like everything. Yeah, yeah, but like a national album. Record, there isn't yeah. a bad song on this. It is it's not always my favorite Sabbath, but it's always in the top two. Um, but I do flip between, you know, like volume four sabotage. 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 I even for at one point love never say die. Which I oh. never liked when I was younger, oh, and then well, now well, there's just some shit on that that's fucking acquired great. Taste. Johnny you know? Blade. Yeah, never say die. Though it's probably fuck. Yeah, I don't know. Sabbath hate- favorite band. I'm still listening to them. It was my first concert when I was like 11 years old. Nice. Not with fucking Ozzy though. I was so pissed. I cried. I was 11. <laughs> With uh, Ronnie, I cried. I was like, "Fuck you, this rainbow." With, 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 with Ronnie, with Ronnie, with Ronnie, uh, with Ronnie James Dio. Yeah, it was uh, eighty-one <laughs> or eighty-two. I'm jealous. Beautiful. I love Ronnie. I'm not a fan of Dio. I can't. Uh, a lot of people not. Um, a lot of people can't. Get behind rainbows in the dark, and I and he looks like a porn star from the seventies. I don't know. I just can't. <laughs> never could. I just, like a skinny though. Ron Jeremy. I don't know. Sabbath is not Sabbath for me if, if Ozzy isn't singing. That's just me. Can't can't people some people do say that. But there's also the like the I don't uh, care like, what people like, think. The, the, the <laughs> first six only people, they're the people I don't like. There's a lot of only Ozzy people. And when they're doing reunions, who's singing? Just saying. Well, you can't oh, sing in his head. Yeah, it's classic. It's funny though, like going back to that taping the police off the radio. Like I heard like the first seven Black Sabbath albums all at the same time, like you know, in the first in in the space of like a month or two. So we didn't know like what the first album was, what the sixth one was. We had we had no idea like what order they came in. So we didn't have any kind of like preconceptions, like like, but we kind of figured out that maybe that Black Sabbath was the first one after a while. We're like, I think we, this is the first, the first album. <laughs> but the others we didn't have, we had no idea like, what order they came. I mean, four volume four. That's a bit of a clue, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We knew like what person one on the fourth one. <laughs> So yeah, well, you had well, I grew up on them because my bro- you know I have older brothers and sister and stuff. So like I grew up on them, um, and that's how I got into punk. I mean, you know, of course. I, I wanted to go and pull that. I got it from family. So yeah, but, yeah, and everybody listened to like completely different shit in my family, so it was cool. Like you get, you know, and I was into Pat Benatar. I was like, <laughs> yeah. If anybody like is thinking about getting the deluxe box set, I would say get it. Deluxe so Pat Benatar. Yeah. Yeah, that one, yeah, that one too. <laughs> yeah, classic. Absolute classic. Untouchable. Yeah. I really didn't listen to Black Sabbath until I was an adult. I didn't. Like, I didn't have the classic rock period. Like, a lot of people went from, like, kitty pop music to, like, hard rock, metal, proto-metal. And I never had that period. And Bill had to show me all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> like, and I, I was know. just, like, my, my friend's boyfriend, who I hated, was really into Black Sabbath and Jethro Tull and Uriah Heep and <laughs> stuff like that. And I was like, that stuff sucks. Deep purple. <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <You're> very real. <laughs> all the time I didn't listen to Sabbath. So I never, it was never a... Like all the Heshers I knew were like Zeppelin and shit yeah. like that. But like uh, all the punks I knew listened to Sabbath. Like yeah. we would trip and definitely listen agree. to Sabbath. So like, yeah. oh, I never heard that before, you know. Yeah, but Sometimes they ask people what they listen to really before, there, before there was punk. And he was like, Black Sabbath, Blue Oyster Cult, Blue Cheer, mm-hmm. Color Bands. Oh, fucking great bands. <laughs> Of them, 
What's that? I said you didn't listen to BOC or fucking Blue Cheer, none of that. Me? No. Well, I listen no. to Blue Cheer. Yeah, I had rock and roll. Parents, it's like so. records but I found at the first store. Are you from New England? I thought you were from the same. Oh, it's not yeah. weird. I'm, I'm okay. But yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm a lot younger than Bill. <laughs> well, um, but it's the, they're from, they're from, uh, are they from Massachusetts? Uh, Blue Oyster Cult? Or New York? New York. Rhode Island? Rhode Island? Island. But Tokyo? Like, Long Island. Okay. <laughs> they're all the same. They're all the same. <laughs> but I know they, yeah, they used to play shows. Like they would play a soft white underbelly in Connecticut and stuff all the time. Like they definitely yeah. were from like the tri state area somewhere yeah. around there. But I don't know. For some reason, I think they're from New York. Yeah, they're, but, like, they're from Shaolin, Staten Island. Um, <laughs> but I'm not sure. I think you're right. I think the Oyster Cult from Staten Island. I think you're right. There you go. That, that's a great way to we start off with Staten Island. <laughs> Maybe. Staten Island. Maybe. Let's know. <laughs> <laughs> to the best of our knowledge. <laughs> I think you're right. I think, I think you're right. All right, that was a great episode. We had a great time. I'm so glad that Pam made it on. Pam made it. Yay. I made it in time too. Like I thought I was going to no, be right like on, and like yeah. coming on the second round or something. We, we stalled for you. We did have a little bit of a chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me just announce next week's show. Uh, Mike DeLorenzo is coming on again, who kindly gifted me the CR record that I showed at the beginning of the show. Two newcomers, Billy Jerome Hamill. They're, it's a Long Island episode. Long Island's in the house <laughs> next week. Next week, And Elise, who's in a bunch of bands. I forgot to write them down. I'll, I'll put it in the description. She's in a bunch of bands, I think, in the Long Island area. So Elise, Elise is coming on. Mike's coming on. Billy's coming on. Be a good show. Same time, uh, September 8th, Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern. See you in the chat. Until next time, stay healthy. <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay clean.